Well, it's go time for your fantasy playoffs, and today's show it's going to mean a lot to you because we've got waiver pickups. Last year at this time, there were at least three league winners still sitting on your waiver wire. Today we reveal some of this year's potential league winners. We talk through the news and a whole lot more. Make sure you like this video, subscribe, enjoy the show. The Fantasy Footballer Studio is brought to you by Samsung Galaxy. Visit Samsung.com to learn more. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Tuesday, December 13th. The Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Andy, Mike, and Jason back with you. Al Borland. Somewhere in outer space. Judge Giamatti is here. The Borgogan as well. We're through it. You're either happy or sad right now. (laughs) There are two states of mind, states of being. You are happy. You are sad. You are casting blame upon whatever, or you are rejoicing in your absolute perfect skill. And I feel like last night was about the equivalent of we were all running the marathon race. The ribbon is there. And that game, we just, we ran and it was act, it, it, the ribbon didn't break. It's, no. We all bounced off of it and crumpled down into a heap of injured bodies. Yes, yeah, some of us ran through the ribbon that sliced us in half. Yes. Um that was a brutal game both uh in in many ways injury wise, uh football wise, cardinal wise. Um so that was um not very fun. But remember, but remember, if you're in any of your leagues still, that is your most important league. Yes, and yes, so yes it is. Be happy cuz you're in the playoffs, baby. Yeah, last night was a mess. Kyler Murray almost certainly tore his ACL and will miss a long period of time. I mean, you're going to go into 2023 without him. When you get him back, will he run the football? I mean, the the question marks are robust now in Arizona. You also have – I mean, I don't know. Does it make him less attractive for a Sean Payton at this point? Does it change the – Narrative for for the end of the season, right? Like if you take Kyler Murray and you still go, you know, the Cardinals had, they have a pretty easy schedule over the back four games. And so there was a world where they could run off five straight and Cliff Kingsbury would stay the coach. There was a world where you could blow games against bad teams and then maybe they make a change. It all goes to the pot now. I mean, it's just a mess. Cardinals get whooped up on by the Patriots 27 to 13. Ramondre Stevenson left with an ankle injury. You, you're you going to be monitoring his injury heading into the playoffs. Twice. Yeah, I did, did, he did the – I got hurt. I taped yeah. it up. I couldn't run on it. And then Devontae Parker, Parker was out with a concussion. James Conner left the game a couple back, of times, yeah. but he was, he was fine. He was great. Yeah. I mean, James Conner has run – in the last handful of games, better than I've seen him in, Arizona, in an yeah. Arizona uniform. The, the, the touchdown run was – I mean, not not very long, maybe a ten yarder or so, but it was an incredible run of he looked like just absolutely trapped in the line, but kept churning those legs and going and ends up with the touchdown. He's and, going to be great for the playoffs. Sorry. I yeah, just no, no. I just think that like one carry for somebody other than James Conner in the offense, he gets every single snap. He catches five to six passes a week now. Yeah, especially I with Colt McCoy there. I'll bet he catches even even more uh, passes going forward. And the nice thing was he did this against a really tough defense. It wasn't, you know, the 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 Patriots' run defense is fantastic. So to actually, you look at the playoff strength of schedule, and it's it doesn't appear very great for James Conner. But this one wasn't great, and he ran through guys and and looked really good. And we saw it, Footland the 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 Kyler injury. <clears throat> We know the implications because our dynasty league, a team needed what I think point seven, 
That's point, what he came up short with. Point, yeah, he needed he point needed, seven more points from Kyler, mm. which, I mean, like coming into the game, whatever, I know it's... That's a guarantee. Yes, and didn't get it, misses the playoffs because of it, saw, saw several teams with, like, Kyler and Ramondre Stevenson, like going into Monday night, I needed six points. Oh, man. And they, so, I mean, just I saw an one of absolute those absolute brutal, brutal finish. I saw one of those where a guy needed a – he only needed a couple points from them, and he ended up having faced Jarek McKinnon, Chuba Hubbard, and Evan Ingram. Oh, <laughs> So the man. other team had no yeah. – the other team didn't even feel yeah. much of a roster but felt – you know, used those three players – I mean, this is this is you know. It's part of the game. Part of the game. We were joking around in the studio yesterday. It's like, you know, one uh, one of our developers had a win and in situation. Faced Evan Ingram is out, and it was like this is this is fantasy. This isn't changing. You're never going to get to the point where, um, what ha what you put on paper happens every single week. You know this because you see the betting lines. You see the uh, the way Vegas maths these games out and then things turn on their head and the Rams win on a Thursday night and Denver keeps it close against Kansas City. And Houston is winning deep into the fourth quarter yeah, against so the Dallas Cowboys. It's just what it is. Um, implications of the injury for Ramondre. You know, you saw Pierre Strong Jr. come in with uh, a big game, 70 yards on the ground, a touchdown, caught two passes. We'll be watching really closely as to whether you have Ramondre – and no Harris, Ramondre and Harris, neither, and then it's Pierre Harris, Strong. No that that yeah. being Damian Harris. Yes, yes. Because also Kevin Harris, their other rookie, is someone that Fair might, enough. might be worth picking up. So uh, it'll be very interesting this week. Obviously, as we get into the running back waivers today, we'll just have to make our decisions right now as to which uh, New England Patriot we're going for. All right, let's jump into some news before we hit the waiver wire. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Well, the Cowboys. They're signing a wide receiver. Oh, um, oh, no. This is a man who really likes it in Texas. Yeah. Historically. A week, week too late. T.Y. Houston himself. See if he can be uh, as effective in Dallas. But T.Y. Hilton. I also so T. Y. Hilton signs with the Cowboys. You would expect that they are not going to sign Odell Beckham. Maybe it doesn't completely rule it out, but you wouldn't think they're going to bring in two guys. So maybe Odell Beckham looks towards the Buffalo Bills, who he visited, um, who seem like they need a wide receiver. Oh, wait a minute! They just signed <laughs> Cole Beasley. <laughs> yeah, to the practice squad. Cole Beasley is unretired again, so we're doing that. Um, is that the is that the pre retirement where you come back just for the playoffs? Is that yes. the, is that the game? I mean, you uh, saw Beckham, right? His his interview. No, which well, not interview, but he was on the uh, the LeBron show. I did not see this. Yeah, and he just said, "There's no point in coming back for the regular season." He's like, "I don't." He's like, "I could probably I could do it probably, but I'm not going to because why?" <laughs> wow, <laughs> why? Yeah, uh, I could name a reason or two. Yeah, I he mean, said, "I'm here for the big stage." I, yeah, and like if I'm running the team and I hear that. I don't know. That's not my favorite if comments I'm in the coaching, world. If I'm coaching the team, I'd be like, yeah, I'd like to make sure you're ready for the playoffs. <laughs> now Maybe I, know the system. I uh, I did mention on Sunday that the Beasles looked like he was missing from this offense. Yes, you did. And uh, his people got a hold of him. He said, sure, I'll play football for money. And then uh, he's back. And did you guys talk about the Josh Allen uh, press conference bit yes. that's going around yesterday? Mm -hmm. Yes, we mentioned it. Because uh, that was <laughs> – that was something else. <laughs> and the idea of a press conference where it's just the That's player. A statement. The too. player is sitting there, and it's just the, the the reporters are just saying saying things. Yeah, that was not a hey, question. Hey, Josh, love your car. <laughs> I mean, just, okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> that was ridiculous. I, I couldn't believe it. T. Higgins. Do you have a question? No. Uh, but I'm not a big fan of that uh, Razor commercial you've been doing. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it doesn't look like a team that can win a Super Bowl. All right. Yeah, <laughs> you be you. Uh, so, T.Y. Hilton, not a fantasy uh, signing there in Dallas. Just helps, you know, potentially helps Could Dak. Could help Dak, yeah. T. Higgins, hamstring day-to-day. -day. That's going to be real fun for you, Mike, making that decision for uh, this upcoming weekend. Because we know the possibility is he plays and he's fine. Uh, he mm -hmm. plays and he's not fine. 
he says he's going to play and he doesn't play or he doesn't play. I, I think with this hamstring injury, you have to have, I feel like two full practices. If he's not practicing in full on Thursday, I will have a really hard time putting him in my lineup. And I was, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, reminded this was the second time that T Higgins has done this. Yeah. He did it back in like week five or something. Now, wasn't Zach Taylor the one who said he held him out? It was his decision? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so thanks for that, Zach. Uh, Mike White, day-to-day -day with a rib injury, planning for him to be out there for the Jets. DJ Moore, knee sprain. Sayonara. I mean, we're going to talk waivers today. Send DJ Moore packing. He's not going to help your fantasy playoffs. Yep. Andy Dalton is going to stay the starter for the Saints. Because it's working, you know? Why, why change it? Well, if it ain't broke... I mean, if it's super broke, don't fix it. I think it's more one of those, like, if it's broke, it'll still be broken regardless of what we do. So, broke is how we I mean, operate. They're, they're still in the race, right? Because Tampa Bay lost. Just barely. No, they're everybody's pretty close, like, within one Five game. and eight, right? But I guess Tampa Bay is six and seven. Everybody's so that's, bad. Yeah, that's one back. I guess that's fair. <laughs> like, I, I, guess I, that's believe, fair. I believe the Panthers control their own destiny right now. They can win out. Yes. Yeah, if they if they if they they oh, they actually get, they in make the hunt. playoffs. Oh baby, that's um that's unbelievable. <laughs> I know it's just the grossest. Look, if anything happens for the Panthers, as long as it is two more victories, then no Baker the people might be happy. No CMC, get it done. No problem. Yeah, Steve Wilkes, what's up? You got Deonta and Chuba. Damian Pierce, he's gonna miss one to two weeks. Team waved Eno Benjamin as a result. <laughs> uh, that's how unlikable Eno is. They, I I kept picturing the idea of like an empty backfield being somehow better than Eno in it for these teams. And they literally are still handing the ball off. They're just dropping it on the ground. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. You you just turn around. You do hand it. But no, Eno was uh, let go. So um, they signed Jared Dokes, and we're not going to have Damian Pierce for your fantasy playoffs, most yeah. likely. And I doubt you're going to want to play him coming back from an ankle sprain in three weeks. Doesn't look good for Mike Boone to return this season for the Broncos. Marlon Mack. The last Mack standing. Yeah, he is. Uh, the Seahawks. Kenneth Walker limited estimated injury report. Oh, because of course they're the Thursday game. Come on. Yeah, the the night. that's what I was going to bring up. I really doubt that Kenneth Walker plays this week. He was a full DNP all last week. So he hasn't practiced yet and they play on Thursday. So I, I would I'd be surprised, but I mean it's not I have a feeling he might play. Yeah? Yeah. Deep I mean, it's deep down. I mean not not in the witchcraft area, okay, but right. but just, just the uh, way the team's talking, I have a I have a hunch. I, I put him fifty fifty myself. And I would say that that is <laughs> I look can't, you ever jammed your ankle, Mike? You no, don't no, know no. what that's all about. I'm that's saying new. you've been jammed. I'm saying that could be terrible for people it could like i it's think san francisco like, i think ken walker missing this week may be the biggest blessing you could get for fantasy purposes do we want to just for, say bench him yes because that, that's just take a formal policy here on tuesday taking all of the injury risk into that game against san francisco who lets no one run is you better hope that like, if you played him and you, you get the line of 15 for 40 and a touchdown that's you'd be, you'd be rooting tune Cowboys for that that line. It's just it's going to be a really big problem. This is this is not a great game for Seattle fantasy options. Like Agreed. it's just I know that uh, they're at home, right? Correct. That's helpful. That's that's definitely helpful for kind of defensive momentum against the team that has no running backs. But I'd be nervous if I had Seattle yeah. options heading into Week One of the playoffs. Brock Purdy got an MRI on Monday. Uh, Josh Johnson would have to start for Brock Purdy if Purdy couldn't go. Dude, Josh Johnson, he is infinite. He just keeps popping up. Yeah, there's got to be a like a little like a text chain for everybody's favorite backups that the coaches go to because Josh Johnson's on that list. Yes, and then Debo sprained MCL, ankle sprain, expected to return at some point. Pro it's not for your during the team. regular season. What is that? That is just very strange timeline yeah the 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 actual timeline would should put him back for the playoffs but the team put out a presser saying that they 
hope and expect to have him back in the regular season. If for fantasy purposes, you're not going to have him back. Like I, I would cut Debo and move on. But it's great news that he didn't, you know, break his ankle. Yeah, there will be Christian McCaffrey bearing as much of the load as humanly possible. Yes. That was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. Welcome to The Fold, presented by Samsung Galaxy. Very important show. Mm -hmm. Assuming you're still around in your fantasy leagues. Uh, we looked back at week 15 waivers last year. Wow. And there were league winners sitting on the waiver wire that people didn't know were going to be league winners. Amon Ra was 32% rostered, became the playoff king last year. Mm -hmm. Alan Lazard was 11% rostered, ended up wide receiver 21, 13, and 11 the last three weeks. How about Rashad Penny? Oh, yeah, <laughs> won a title with Rashad Penny last yeah. year. 24% rostered at this point last year was the running back one. So just think about that for a second. On the waiver wire <laughs> was the number one playoff running back at this point last year. And this happens. And we came on and said, we guarantee he's going to be the number one running back for the playoffs. Remember that? Oh, I remember. Kyle, you remember that? Great call, guys. Well Thank done. you. Called it all. but it, it, We checked the tape. Don't worry about it. Yeah, every, don't. We scrubbed that, Brooks. <laughs> <laughs> cut that, cut that, cut that. Um, we Every single year this happens. There are waiver wire guys that win your championship. So if you're thinking like, oh, I've, I've lost so-and-so to injury and I'm in the playoffs, but now my run is over. No, it's not. Make your moves. Well, and, and an example of that might be, and this is not me making the Rashad Penny call, but players like Pierre Strong Jr., is they're an example of the type of opportunities that can you know, manifest down the stretch where a team like the Patriots are fighting for their playoff lives. They need to run the football. They have provided fantasy value with the running backs throughout the year, and then suddenly an opportunity is there, and the guy is not rostered anywhere. I mean, in redrafts, mm -hmm. he's not going to be on any right. rosters. So uh, don't forget to pay close attention this week. Take some shots, even if they don't pan out in week one. Take some shots, and we will welcome a number of new players into the fold and see if they can help your fantasy roster. And tis the time of the season where you are – not just looking at your roster. Mm -hmm. Look at who you're playing. If you have a bye week, you might want to be looking like just some projecting. Who may I be playing next week? Do they need a position? Can I block that team by picking up who I believe is the best shot? Now, you can, clearly you can't pick up every single player on the waivers, but you need to be active. Don't just look at your bench and go, I'm cool. Make sure if look at someone else's bench. If they are not cool, mm-hmm. Keep them iced. You've already prepared and you've picked up your defense yep. for week 16. Great. But does your opponent have no good defense to play and there's another good one out there? Just pick yep. them up. Yep. Yeah, I have a dynasty team that has lost all its backup quarterbacks and I've just been grabbing other backups around the NFL. You saw last night, Kyler Murray goes down and Colt McCoy is suddenly a, a quarterback in play. So lots can happen. And uh, I would also say just... You know, if you're in it, like you don't have a bye week, like your championship week is this week. Mm -hmm. it, it's not. It's not two weeks from now. I know that you'd love to project the matchup for week 17, but this is your championship. You lose this week, you're gone. So treat it as such. Spend whatever you need to on Fab to secure a win this week and figure it out for next week because a lot can happen. They're, the juggernauts that you think are juggernauts could lose a player mm -hmm. or two. So. All right, let's welcome some wide receivers into the fold. Uh, it looks like at the tippy top of our list right now, DJ Chark. 55% rostered, however, but plays the Jets, Carolina, Chicago. Um, he you would, know, he's not number one on my wide receiver list. He's not number one on my list either. I think he is on Mike's, though. He, he, he is difficult because the matchup this week is not great uh, against the New York Jets on the road, but he has been spectacular. Uh, in the last couple of weeks since returning from injury. He does have, you know, the the Jamison Williams issue of what what is what does Jamison Williams snaps look like next week? Uh because he went from, you know, I think it was ten and to to about twenty percent 
But the last two weeks against Jacksonville, 5 for 98, 6 for 94 with the touchdown against Minnesota, he is uh, – I would say he's we, – you know, we're saying if you're playing for this week, probably not my number one. If you have a bye week, though, I think that DJ Chark is someone who should be picked up because you get Carolina – in two weeks. Truth is, is uh, Donovan Peoples Jones, Zay Jones, and DJ Chark are not pr available in a lot of leagues. So sure. I would put them uh, personally. I'd be Zay um, Peoples Jones, and then Chark. Jason, I don't know what. Yeah, I have I have Zay above DJ Chark, but my number one pickup. Yeah, I I think you're going to go where my number one pickup this week is Elijah Moore. Yeah. Um, in this matchup, you have one of the worst defenses against wide receivers in Detroit and the best defense against wide receivers in, in in the New York Jets. And I realize that Elijah Moore has let people down for a while, but if you look at a lot of stuff that's going on, there, I think you could trust him. I think you can pick him up and play him in the playoffs. Elijah Moore has had 16 targets the last two weeks. Corey Davis is probably going to miss this game. The matchup is perfect, and you have Mike White there. He ran 84% of the routes. So, I mean, this is a this is now a full-time wide receiver with talent. He's playing out of the slot, which kills the Detroit Lions. I, I think Elijah Moore is my – like, he is my number one pickup. Yeah, I'm going to move him up. For um, teams that need a, a play this week. For I'm more I'm slightly more concerned about the downside. I see the upside, but if Corey Davis is back, like you know the targets and the routes run last week are a, a partial mm -hmm. reflection of of the injury to Corey Davis. Denzel Mims still playing seventy percent of snaps. So if Corey Davis came back, I would be a little concerned. You know the Minnesota matchup was the Minnesota matchup was good for Elijah Moore the week before, where he only had two catches, but. I do see the path to upside, and if Corey Davis misses a game due to his concussion, like what more would you want than Mike White against Detroit and Jared Goff in that matchup? Um, I, I would agree with you. This is this is projecting Corey Davis out. I would be much less confident if – not that Elijah Moore couldn't get it done, but like I want him to – have the 10 targets against Detroit because I think if he does, he'll have a great game. And if Corey Davis is there, it, it, it could go elsewhere. Now, Chris Moore is 5% rostered. And um, Kyle, what did I tell you I wasn't supposed to do on Friday? Yeah, you shouldn't have pivoted at all. So I did pivot. <laughs> I did pivot mid show. Yeah. And I took Chris Moore out of my flex. Chris Moore went 10 for 124. I did mention it at the end of the show. So if somebody took that, I mean, you wouldn't have now, from me, but. Uh, Chris Moore I, had a monster game. I have a big question for you, though. Had you have not pivoted yeah. away from Chris Moore, yeah. would he have had a big game? No, you're right. I provided the big uh, game. Thank you. I thank didn't you. think about that. Do me a favor. I would have also definitely won by a lot <laughs> and in uh, in our little shame town. Don't. Or Andy's shame a <laughs> Whatever we want to call Don't, it. Don't uh, pick him up. Yeah, my three wide receiver pickups, uh, my rankings are Elijah Moore, Chris Moore, um, and then Jason Moore, <laughs> uh, and then Zay Jones. Those interesting. I you think so. You have the I, like. Do we have any for any more information on Nico or or Brandon Cooks? Brandon Cooks, I I would not see coming back. Nico He's is probably more paddle boarding somewhere right now. <laughs> like I don't think <laughs> super hurt guys. I don't think Brandon splash, Cooks splash splash. I don't think Brandon Cooks is checking the box score even. No, a hundred percent. So I mean, Nico could come back, but even without Nico, you've lost Damian Pierce. You're playing against the Kansas City Chiefs. You're going to be throwing the entire game, and it's one of those things where it's like I don't know how Chris Moore doesn't have a PPR decent game. If you're trying to pick someone up, where you're like, I've got an eight point baseline, maybe I can get fourteen points out of this, and I mean that's that's your dude. He just he he freaks me out a little bit. With all the other variables, because like the 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 two weeks before, three targets, three targets. Like if if the other guys are on the field, then Chris Moore has a lot of risk. Um, yeah, that's fair. Uh, other other lower tier options to pay attention to is the the wide receiver room in New England. Depending on what happens with Devontae Parker's concussion and the return of Jacoby Myers. You can take some dart throws at the Aguilar, Thornton, Kendrick Bourne trifecta as they take on the Raiders, um, a, the, a vulnerable defense. Yeah, it's a good matchup. That would be the order I would put them in, Aguilar, Thornton, and uh, Kendrick Bourne. 
but I would need both of those other wide receivers to be out to be confident enough to play them. I don't know that yeah, we'll Jacoby could be back. Yeah, I, I would expect Myers to be back, Parker to be out. Um, is there a world where this is more of an elevation of the of the tight end confidence than it is the wide receiver room? Possibly. Yeah, I mean, we well, saw Hunter Henry have a good game. Their two biggest plays of yesterday were two Hunter Henry on two different seam plays. That being said, it was the Arizona Cardinals who contractually are not allowed to guard tight ends. So um, maybe, maybe you could pick up uh, Hunter Henry if you're missing other wide receiver options. And obviously, you're missing a wide receiver option in Ramondre Stevenson, who's been catching so many passes out of the backfield. Yeah, it, it, it's crazy because I feel like I can make a storyline for why each of those three wide receivers would be the best one for the week, which is what concerns me as well, like Aguilar, Thornton, and Bourne. Like, I feel like it could be any of them, and that would be a little bit of a gamble for your fantasy roster in the playoffs. But you can drop DJ Moore and take your shot if you yep. want to. Uh, other players of potential interest – Robert Woods uh, does take on the Chargers defense, and if they don't have the return of Traylon Burks, you could take a shot there. And uh, Richie James had nine targets, PPR targeting Richie James, 19% rostered, 7 for 61 and a touchdown. He finds his way into the end zone. Like If you looked at him as a potential DFS play last week, he had had a, a couple of games where he got in there, and last week was one of them as well. And and um, he's he's rostered in half of the leagues, but we talked about DJ Chark, who's been very relevant. Not a great matchup this week, but maybe the next two weeks could be you mm -hmm. know league winner. I, I almost lean the Jameson Williams side over DJ Chark. I know he has not been as involved, but the talent is outstanding. And the, you look at the situations where you could have a player go from absolutely nothing to league winner. There's a lot of uh, you know, cards in the deck for that to happen with Jamison Williams. I'm definitely on the Chark side of that one. Yeah. Yeah, I see what you're... Safer for sure. Yeah, Chark I is just... much safer. I don't know if the transition can happen fast enough for me to be happy with it in fantasy. I mean, I feel like that could be two weeks from now as Detroit makes the playoffs, but if I was starting one this week, Mike, would you start Chark or would you start Williams? If it's this week, it's definitely Chark. Uh, again, the, the matchup is not something like DJ Chark is more of a next week type of a thing. But I guess the nice part is if you're not playing them this week, you can sit back and, and see if Jamison Williams snaps get up. Because 90% of the snaps, it's not going to get it done. I know he had the 40-yard touchdown, but it was a – yeah. I get, I'm sure some of it was a product of the Jamison Williams talent and speed, but it was also just a very broken uh, defensive coverage. No one within, I don't know, 15 yards of him. All right, let's uh, take a quick break and then welcome some running backs into the fold. All right, let's dive in. Let's welcome some running backs into the fold. We've got some heavily rostered players, but they need to be mentioned at the top just in case. Check your league. I know mm -hmm. a lot of you are in competitive leagues, and sometimes you scoff that we mention these names. Relax. We'll get to some deeper we're, names. We're a show for everyone. And uh, we pay attention to the roster percentage. So, you know, Jarek McKinnon, Zonovan Knight, those two players are over 50% rostered. But, you know, Zonovan showed something last week, 17 for 71 and a rushing touchdown. It wasn't the week that some people hoped for from Michael Carter. And Zonovan Knight's been involved. And then Jarek McKinnon, nine targets, seven for 112 and two touchdowns. You know, impressive week for McKinnon through the air. Yeah, he's uh, – it would be Zon of a night for me, but Jarek McKinnon is a – like, he's a high, high-variance player because he could end up, you know, just with three fantasy points. But comparative to the rest of these guys we're going to talk about, like, uh, if he hits – I mean, he hits for, for nine nine targets and seven for 112. Yeah, it's it's funny. Because he's more valuable in the receiving game, I'm less excited about McKinnon, especially against the uh, Houston Texans sure. where, you know, this whole season you just haven't had to throw on him much. Um, you know, this projects to me to be more of an Isaiah Pacheco game. And McKinnon 
kind of cycles in and like the, well, who are you taking? Are you going Juju? Are you going MVS? Are you going – McKinnon's kind of in that conversation sure. where, yeah, you can have a great game. you got Patrick Mahomes throwing you the ball, but also you could just be left out because you got, you know, eight different guys you can go to. Uh, Chuba Hubbard last week, 14 for 74 and one. If you watched the game, he looked pretty good. 39% rostered. Has Pittsburgh this week, then Detroit. Chuba Hubbard is in that category of maybe diamond in the rough, in my opinion. This I, yeah. new Carolina offense is doing one thing it, it, and one thing only. Yeah. They are running the ball. It, it, the, the way that it will they, be established. They have imposed their will against Seattle. It was a sight to behold. Like Sometimes we mock the establish the run, but when you execute drives where the defense knows you're running and then you – pick up six yards a run or something it's impressive to watch because the the offensive linemen are pushing people around tuba hubbard was getting uh involved in a big way the, he's just one of those guys that sticks out to me as a sneaky smart addition to your roster yeah, maybe tuba, my number one pickup in light of roster percentages yes tuba is my number one pickup at running back for those that are available in the majority of leagues. I what I really like is he has the matchup against Pittsburgh and if for a team that it uh wants to establish it, you got to make sure that you can keep it close and Pittsburgh is not a scary offense that, that Pittsburgh could have Mitchell Trubisky as their quarterback yet again this week, so he's he is very interesting uh for some cheap volume off the waiver wire. Another player that would be an instant league winning type of addition if something happened jordan mason yeah. running back for the san francisco 49ers yeah i agree did nothing but establish himself further as the next man up in my opinion in this matchup against tampa when 11 for 56 had some chunk plays we know the knee for you know like mccaffrey will show up as questionable this week atlas can only hold that globe for so long <laughs> <laughs> and so while while Christian McCaffrey has the world on his shoulders, should that prove too heavy, Jordan Mason will be A lot of people awesome. don't know Atlas had severe tendonitis in both knees. <laughs> right, and that's a big problem. <laughs> yeah, for holding up the world. You try and hold a planet. I, I'm telling you, it's reasonable, but he'll break down. Uh, what, are, what are you doing with the Marlon Mack hype? Uh, two for 62 in the passing game, had the touchdown – not doing anything. I, I am not very high on Marlon Mack. I, I see him as, you know, he had one big play. Um, outside of that play, he's not really that involved. You still well, have... Mike Boone is done. Yeah, Mike Boone's out. Well, sure, but you still have Latavius Murray. I mean, Latavius Murray's the guy there. Am I am I missing something? He's not injured, right? No, no, he's, he's still there, but his snaps, while they were, you know, trending up, the last two weeks, they have trended down. He's down to fifty three percent. I like Marlon Mack. I'm not hot and bothered by it, but I do think that he is in contention. If you have to break the glass, oh, man, I I I don't think I, I I will say this: the uh, the matchup is okay for them against Arizona, but you probably don't have Russell Wilson. So now you're on a backup yeah, quarterback a point. with a backup running Ripping. back who. You know, Marlon Mack only played thirty-two percent of snaps. So, I like I'm not. There are guys. Put it this way: I'm not starting him under any circumstance. So, if I'm picking up an insurance back, I mean that would be Jordan Mason. That would be Alexander Madison. These guys, where if the starter goes down, they are absolute league winners. If if Latavius Murray goes down to an injury, you can consider starting Marlon Mack. <laughs> Which New England running back are you picking up? Pierre Strong was the one that received the two targets. I mean, when I look at that offense, I'm like, I want the closest thing to Ramondre, but more snaps for Kevin Harris. He was the one who kind of started the action, and then Strong got going. I would pick up Pierre Strong ahead of Kevin Harris. The question is what you believe about Damian Harris. Yeah, Damian Harris might be the correct pickup. He was doubtful all week. Um, not not ruled out until basically a game time decision. That leads me to believe that it's possible he is back from the hamstring issue this coming it's week. Actually, a thigh. It's a thigh. It's a thigh. Yeah. Or, that's what I mean. The hamstring yes. would have been week six. Yes, thank you. And then the illness was week nine, and then the thigh the is thigh. week thirteen and fourteen. So it's a really good time for Damian Harris in staying healthy. But we do know 
I mean, I mean, you know, we're Not talking the about free agency year you wanted, Damien. But we're talking about guys who could win your league who are on waivers, and I think it could be one of these two players, Pierre Strong or Damian Harris. But if Damian Harris is healthy, he's the dude. Like, there's not Agreed. a question. If Harris is active, uh, then it's Damian Harris over Pierre Strong. And maybe this week he's not active. But then the next week, if Ramondre Stevenson is out, eventually Damian Harris will come back, will be the starter if Ramondre ends up missing three or four weeks with a high ankle sprain, which is a normal timeline. And so to me, I'm picking up Damian Harris if he's if he's available on waivers, which at this point he I agree he might be. He would Are be you the that, guy. You're that concerned about Ramondre? Yeah, I mean a high ankle sprain. Where, usually, where did you get the high ankle sprain? I guess that's just what it's projecting. Kind of been like the fact that he he came in and couldn't finish the game. That is very troubling to me. Yeah, I mean, it, it, we don't know for sure yet what it is. I saw more someone, troubling than if he was just out to begin with the whole game. Ramondre? Yeah, wasn't wouldn't it be better that he came back into the game than than he well, was I'm, just I'm, ruled out immediately? I for for the long term because it's about the, the staff to come back there and they said, "Hey, you can't play." It's, wouldn't it's that a, have been worse? It's about the same to me because I'm I'm saying I'm comparing it to guys who tweak their ankle, go off, miss a quarter or, or two, get taped up, and they come back and they're able to finish. Like and then his, they still miss a week. Yeah, and then their ankle swells up and it becomes a a problem. His was so bad that he couldn't finish the game. That is a, that's a red flag to me. I just didn't know if you had heard something when no, you no, said no. three to four weeks. Uh, well, he's just he, if it's a high ankle, that's three to four weeks. Yeah, I that that's all it was. Is I saw some people speculating that they believed it was a high ankle sprain uh, based on the play, and if that's the case, that's more of the normal timeline. Ramondre's comment leaving the locker room said, "Is uh, when asked whether he'll play next week, he said, I hope.' Which, of course." Oh, man. So, really, really helpful. Uh, you drop in Gus Edwards? No, I'm not. Why not? Just it's, in the insurance policy realm? Insurance? I mean, he got a lot of Are you dropping him for Chuba? Uh, I don't know. Like, Gus Edwards, I, if he were out there on the waiver wire, I'd be picking him up. It was it was him and, and J.K. Dobbins. Yeah. What? Like, Gus Edwards got a bunch of work. Should, I mean, And they're down be to a third string quarterback probably have we heard anything on jk dobbins that he just flat is, wasn't per, injured <laughs> i mean he had a great game and then yeah, he, it he, would, we he talked looked about like he was, was limping or it looked like he had a brace that was on backwards <laughs> and yes, yes. and then he just came in and got the touchdown and was fine uh, he was like gus edwards I'm, maybe he's got a new run maybe that's why maybe. he's out maybe a little pitter patter trying <laughs> on a new run picked up that uh the adrian peterson where it's like one yeah, step yeah, yeah. and then throw your body forward. The, hitch, the little hitch? Yeah, but last week he was... Looked more a, like dragging his leg, but whatever. Again, not fantasy. You didn't get a huge output, but 13 carries, 66 yards. The, I mean, that's if you're going to end up with that from Chuba, that wouldn't be surprising at all. So I'm, I'm not dropping Gus. James Cook. <sighs> last week, yeah. neither running back did anything for the Bills. I don't think I want to. Michael Carter, you moving yeah, on? Yes. I am, yes. Kareem Hunt? Kareem Hunt is in the same realm of insurance. Jordan Mason or like, Kareem Hunt? Ooh. Oh. That's a really good uh, – <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go Jordan Mason. <laughs> I, I like that you were having some internal dialogue where you were well, reacting to yourself, whereas – Ooh. Because oh, first, ah. my, my initial act, reaction was, well, if they are propelled to the starter, who has more value? But then it became – no, I think the question is, Who's more likely that the player in front of them is going to miss time? And unfortunately, yeah, unfortunately, uh, he, Christian McCaffrey, who's on my team, uh, oh, I, he would be the more likely between him and Nick Chubb to just be overworked and have to miss some time. And we we didn't mention him much, but I'm looking, I'm trying to find more information on that that J.K. Dobbins run, and I'm seeing a quote from him. Where he said, yeah, "Why he, didn't he score?" He says he was upset that he couldn't beat the Pittsburgh defenders to the end zone uh, because he basically ran out of gas. He said, "Quote: I'm uh, okay. still not in that the makes shape sense. I need to be in because I would have never gotten caught." Dobbins said, "Totally agree. That's why we all thought he was hurt. It, it makes it, more sense as to why he came in for the very next play. Like he literally was just back out there." He said, "He's not all the way back, but he's going to continue to get better, and hopefully, these 100-yard games will start turning into 200-yard games." That's his quote. So J.K. Dobbins is someone that we should be picking up off of waivers. I was worried he was off injured. Off of waivers? Yeah, I mean, I, I think J.K. Dobbins I'll is. Go. Let me go look at this. 
Uh, Dobbins, it, sleeper, 74% rostered. If, if he's out there, if you don't have an IR league, I mean, you would have had to have had him for a long time when he wasn't playing. So I'm just saying there might be a league out there that you should you should poke. Let's Look. dive into what tight ends are welcoming into the fold. Greg Dulcich, eight targets, three for 42 last week, takes on Arizona. So that's delicious. It is. it is uh, Again, it'll probably be Brett, Brett Rippon for the Denver Broncos, which sucks because the matchup is so good, man. Like he, Hunter Henry, 70 yards. It just it happens every single week. Are you? Uh, it doesn't bother me one bit that Russell's not out there. Yeah, not even the smallest amount. Uh, I, Russell's I mean, awful. Russ played well for a tiny stretch of last game when he started running the ball in a good matchup, and it was great to see. I saw Dulcich but, get targets from Rippon. But as bad as Russell has been all year, I'm not looking at a change to Rippon as a reason to not go after Greg Dulcich. The matchup against Arizona, I I, I think you can I think you can pick him up and play him. All right. Chig Aconquo. Yeah. 23% roster plays Jacksonville. Five, five targets in three straight weeks. Has the athleticism you want to see. Was a really good play this last week. It's not quite as good of a matchup, but still Wait, not a bad it, one. Is that the right matchup? They play them back-to-back? -back? Wait, what do we have them as? It's, no. No, they play uh, the Chargers. Okay. Yeah, that, that makes more that sense. That sounds more likely. I was going to say, they just played Jacksonville, so. This isn't the NBA. <laughs> With the back-to-backs? Uh, Chargers are 19th against tight end and schedule adjusted. So right middle of the pack. You know, heavily rostered, David Njoku, 80% rostered. Yeah, he's not out there. He's the uh, numero uno. And then Evan Ingram, 60% rostered. You know, these guys are on. This, it tells you how the tight end situation is because Dulcich, Njoku, and Ingram are probably picked up. So Chig and Hunter Henry would be the Oof. actual potential pivots. Ah, uh, man. Do you have the underpants for Henry? Sure. Against the Raiders? Yeah, I got the underpants for Henry. Okay. I mean, the underpants, you need them for all tight ends. So, <laughs> I mean, Just, putting Hunter Henry in there doesn't feel any different than, you know, anybody. Chick. I mean, people were playing Foster Morrow for the last few weeks. You got to yeah. feel fine playing Hunter Henry if that was your options. And, you know, Chig is in the same boat. Chig has the chance to be a league winner at the position. He, you know, uh, emerging he, as a as, as a design target. What I like about the offense is they they run chig plays. I mean, they sure. just call plays for him. They need him to. He needs more snaps to get into that contention. But he's he's definitely on the radar every week right now. I mean, the nice thing is, is I mean, he almost got in twice last week for two touchdowns, and um, he's a good player. Yeah. Any other tight ends that you want to mention? You what about Trey, would, Trey McBride last night? Oh, God. what a catch! Yeah, um, I'm surprised you didn't bring that up, Mike. I mean that eh. that was one of the best catches I've seen at tight end in terms of holding on to it. I was 100 percent sure that that ball was somewhere in the stands, <laughs> and when they showed the replay, like I watched it, I was like, "Oh gosh, he's concussed," and, the, and that was not a catch. Then I watched the replay, and he's like, he held on to it through one of the most brutal hits. Yeah, he went flying a good five yards. I mean, it was a he's it a was big boy. No penalty, right? I mean, that no, was, it was just a clean hit. That was awesome. Yeah, but just, I mean, ending three for twenty eight. I, I don't know. I haven't seen enough for Trey McBride, and then they the matchup with Denver. I don't love it. Yeah. Uh, the last thing, uh, I will call out because it, it was brought to my attention from some other uh, industry friends. Uh, this is this is platform specific, but fellas, did, did you know that Driscoll of the Houston Texans no. has tight end eligibility over on Yahoo? What? Yeah, it's again he doesn't on sleeper, which is where we play. So this is not for everybody. Uh, I don't know what ESPN's doing with him. Driscoll rules, but. He it was a full platoon at the quarterback position last week. They'll do week. it again if it continues, and you can actually play a fifty percent snap quarterback in your tight end position. Yeah, I would do that. Over, Hill two point oh. I would do that over Hunter Henry. Yeah, it's it's worth a look, and he's actually throwing the ball a, a little bit. He he, he, he ran it he, more, yeah. yes, but yeah. So it's, it's like a Taysom situation, yeah, for sure. Okay, wild, yes. 
Uh, you, that seems weird to me because Driscoll's never been a tight end, to my knowledge. Uh, yeah, I don't. Like, I don't know what happened in the preseason. He switched for I was a second. Say, to I remember tight hearing end. that. Okay, because yeah. I was like, because for years he's been a quarterback, and now he's playing quarterback. But I, okay, great. By hook or by crook in Houston, he's got a plan. Yeah, to play tight <laughs> end. Oh, Driscoll. <laughs> All right, let's dive into what team defenses we're welcoming into the fold. Super important for this week. Um, Kansas City's probably roster, but they play Houston. So you better look. They probably got signed last week with the Denver game. Take a glance. There are a number of interesting ones, though, this week. I mean, I've queued up defenses in a number of leagues already. You know, you have, in particular, the Steelers car facing Carolina and Carolina facing the Steelers. Both directions <laughs> mm -hmm, of that sure. matchup are attractive to me. Um, the Green Bay Packers face the Los Angeles Rams. Uh, the Packers are lingering with a small amount of potential to still make the playoffs. They're at home. No more Baker magic? Uh, probably not. Um, they're at home against the Rams. So that one's interesting. And then I love, 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 oh. love oh. the Saints. Yeah. Okay. The Saints are my favorite defense this week. Is that because they're playing against Desmond Ritter in his first start? That would be why, Mike. Yes, the uh, it, I, you, look, it usually works out at home it, it, to boot. So the Saints are delicious. Cardinals defense, which has been very good for fantasy all year long, take on Denver and Brett Rippon. That's a great defense. Like there are options. Like to me, this is saying you and your opponent are probably both going to have a pretty good defense. But if you have the chance to play some. Defense, defense, right? Mm -hmm. Sure. Guard, um, you know, force them to play a slightly worse option. That'd be nice, too. Yep. If you're on your bye week, uh, I would probably pick up Tennessee Titans because yes. they play the Houston Texans. And that's <laughs> that's been the matchup. You I don't get like, you didn't get put off by the no uh, by the Cowboys by the, the one. I'm not going to let the one game. I don't think they transformed in Houston. <laughs> maybe, maybe, like, maybe they come out and they're, they're, it's a it's a very surprising Matt. like oh Houston kind of figured something out this week I don't think they did Houston's best offensive player still last week was Damian Pierce right and he will be out and he's gone that's an upgrade <laughs> it's an upgrade for what just look at what happened with Cooks and Nico Collins <laughs> you take away, take away their strengths and their weaknesses become strengths I see. I, I don't know. And because they had so many weaknesses, now they have so many strengths. <laughs> I get it. We didn't we didn't mention it at the top. And by the way, week 16, the Browns take on New Orleans, Titans, Houston, uh, Bengals, New England, 49ers, Washington. Uh, then week 17, the Giants face the Colts offense. Ravens take on the Pittsburgh offense. That's a good one. Jacksonville takes on Houston. Didn't mention it at the top. Didn't you know? We didn't have to mention it, but man, um, so sad to hear the news about Mike Leach. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What yeah. what a uh, what an incredible coach and even better personality in the football universe. I, I saw the quote from Cliff Kingsbury, and I know we don't give him a lot of credit for stuff, but Mike Leach was obviously a huge influence on him. He's part of that coaching tree, but he made the comment that like football is much worse without Mike Leach, and then also much less interesting. And it's like, man. I also saw a quote, a really good one this morning. He said, in a world of Urban Myers, be a Mike Leach. Mm. And talk about two different dynamics of coaches. So that was really sad news to hear. If you want to have a good time, you can go on pretty much an infinite YouTube yes. uh, dive on just Mike Leach press conferences, interviews. The dude is sharp and funny and fun. Must have been a wonderful time being a player for yes. his team. What was the pine cone? Quote was like if you're in a in yeah. a in a pine cone war. Yeah, there's like no time to get out of it. You it, just got to get in. Or so I don't remember what yes, it was. Jason is correct. Go look up Mike Leach quotes. Uh, oh, if a pine cone war breaks out, you don't have any choice but to engage in it. There's no neutral countries in pine cone wars. It's like I mean, <laughs> there's, there's a, a Yogi Berra esque type of of man, yes, it so. ranks all the Halloween candy, but like with full sincerity. And that's what makes the, the all of these quotes so great. Him talking about coffee. Oh yeah, just, yeah. He's you like, shared that one this yeah, morning. Yeah, like, it's it's just it's bad. It's terrible. You don't try and mask it. You just drink it down one sip at a time. <laughs> oh yeah, that's great. Uh, I, I saw him give the marriage advice to a sideline reporter. Oh, that he's, was so awesome. Yeah, just told her 
go elope. <laughs> he goes, well, you want to keep it on the download, but you've done a really bad job of that right now. So, <laughs> All right. Well, uh, rest in peace, Mike Leach. That was Welcome to the Fold, presented by our friends at Samsung Galaxy. You can unfold the edge-to-edge screen of the it's, Galaxy. It's huge. Uh, Z Fold 4 to maximize your game viewing experience wherever you are. Visit Samsung.com to learn more. Full stream ahead. Well. This this one's big because you have. Yeah, just don't mess it up, guys. It's a hard. It's genuinely it's a hard week. Some weeks are easy to stream a quarterback. Oh, I, I think it's easy as in. Black and white more so? Yeah, I think that there's one clear option at the top, but people will be competing like no Lamar, no Kyler. I mean, there's people who have to make some moves here. Yeah, and, and you, you have... Um, no Jer- Wolford. I mean, goodness. <laughs> well, and some of the guys that you have been in the streaming category, Jared Goff yeah. has been on fire. I'm There's no way I'm starting Jared it's Goff personally terrifying. on the road against the number one schedule adjusted fantasy team against quarterbacks. But I am starting their quarterback is Mike White yeah. against Detroit. Uh, Detroit, they're dead last in schedule adjusted fantasy points allowed to the quarterback position. Uh, you know, in six Mike White starts over the last two years, the Jets have averaged 74 offensive plays per game. That's number one in the NFL. You're getting a lot of plays. De- Detroit has been really bottling up the run. They are a pass funnel defense. You could throw it on them and you can't run it on them. So I think Mike White's going to have to do work. And there are, you know, there's some worry about his current health. But if he is active, I think he's the number one, the the number one uh, streaming candidate, even if he is banged up because of the matchup. I feel like that is something that you should dig into a little bit more with the fact that you would play Mike White over Jared Goff. Like Goff obviously had a monster week. I know the Jets are an intimidating matchup. But I feel like that's still a spicy, scary, nerve-wracking type of thing to do. You know, Goff's been a top-five quarterback two straight weeks. Has he been at home both of those yes, games? Yes, he home- has, but he also didn't have DJ Chark or Jamison Williams yeah. earlier in the year when we were dealing with – or or DeAndre Swift. So if you take those players yeah, he away – He still doesn't have Swift. Uh, <laughs> like the, the, it's, it, he has It's he a has fair Swift. point. I mean, yeah, it's a fair point. One week does not make the whole season. Of uh, – yeah, but four out of five. It's, Swift is killing me. But <laughs> if it, like it's a fair point to say he didn't have the the full arsenal of wide receivers earlier in the season. But it's it, it's very difficult to not take into account how bad he has been on the road comparatively to what he's been at home. Yeah, I mean, it, he's a tough bench. He's not yeah, on he, the road this not... year. Two hundred twenty-seven and point four touchdowns per game. That's his average. So yeah. I, I, I'm not disagreeing. I'm just saying that that will. It, it sounded like an obvious thing, but I think for other people, that's going to be a really difficult thing. Sauce Gardner, the pass rush, the 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 defense that it, the Jets are rolling out there has been trouble for plenty of other great uh, teams. You know, like I said, they're number one in schedule adjusted against quarterbacks. They're number one in schedule adjusted against wide receivers over the last six weeks. They're the number one matchup or most difficult matchup for wide receivers. They just have a really tough time, and this is in New yeah. York. So, so by extension, then are you? And I know we'll talk about the matchup, but are you like the Chark uh, Amon Ra? Um, Amon Ra uh, is in, but that's why I was where initially we like. I think I'm even have Chark at the top of my waivers currently, but I'm going to adjust that because I would prefer those those other players. Like I I would pick up Elijah Moore to play over DJ Chark this week, and that's like part of the excitement for Mike White. It it is a bummer because Corey Davis is actually he's good. He kind of has moved himself into this category because he was such an early first round pick. Feels like he was an absolute bust of a draft pick. We were excited for fantasy. But he's good. Like he is an actual asset to this team. But if you have Garrett Wilson, who is fully legit, superstar Elijah Moore, I do think is a legit player. And they just you know, something weird was going on. But maybe we, maybe we figured it out. Those two wide receivers with Mike White is you know the Lions very interesting. are favored. I wanted to look that up, and that blows my mind. They're favored wow. on the road in this game. Wow. Yeah, by a point. Holy moly. So just throwing it out there. Like sure. I think 
I don't think Goff. Is, I think Goff is a nervous star, but you might not have the ability to pivot to a Mike White. You might have to be riding, and I, I hope that they can figure it out here. And I, playing for the playoff. What playoffs. an amazing game that's going to be. I will keep everyone filled in. Didn't think Jets Lions would be that exciting at this <laughs> yeah. point in the year. Uh, we'll keep everyone filled in through the course of the week. But in the League of Record playoffs, I had you know I was riding with Jared Goff last week. I had I picked up Mike White on Sunday. Just in case uh, me and Kyle won and got into the playoffs to play Mike White this week, and that's currently how we have it. Not nervous about a mid-game knockout like last week? when Joe Very, Oh, it, when I saw him just getting the crap beat out of him, it was like, okay, I guess we're not streaming Mike White. But I'd be he, afraid of the rib injury coming up. But he finished up. the game, and yeah, like, again, what other, what other we need all week to, we need all the information on Mike White. So, other streamers, who who you guys got? Kirk Cousins against Indianapolis. Indianapolis sure. has been the 23rd ranked defense against fantasy quarterbacks over the last five weeks. They're at home. I think Kirk is an interesting play. He's got the best wide receiver in football. And you've seen, you know, he would have had a better week last week if Mr. TJ Hawkinson could catch a few more passes. And sure. he was still, still got a couple touchdowns. So I don't like it as much as the upside of a Mike White game against Detroit, but I still think he's solid. And, and safer than the ribs. And yeah. this, this, look, this guy, he's on your waiver wire. I did not have the courage whatsoever to do this. this I get morning. it. Oh, well, I, look, I am the, the merchant of steel underpants. Brock Purdy against the Seattle Seahawks. Divisional game completed 71% of his passes. Uh, it, we, you know, we can, we get to give really fun stats. Like he's the only, uh, quarterback in his first start to beat Tom Brady. That's fun. Five total touchdowns already. Like, the fact that Debo is out, that really, really sucks. But there are just – there's so many playmakers around. He f have seems, to go face Seattle in Seattle? He seems to fit exactly what the Shanahan system wants and needs. And, like, he's already uh, – I, I can't remember the stat off the top of my head, but it's, like, essentially, like, long touchdowns outside the numbers. Like, Brock Purdy basically already tied – what Jimmy Garoppolo did for this team. He's more willing to go down the field. He's accurate. The fact that he remained on this team while they were committed to Trey Lance and they did all the stuff to bring Jimmy Garoppolo back indicated how much they had faith in this kid. So I'm going to trust the Shanahan faith and the weapons around Brock Purdy. I think you can stream him. Some other options out there. Mac Jones has the Raiders matchup, but we need. I, I think you need him to get some wide receivers back healthy. Yeah. Um, Matt Ryan against <laughs> Captain Kirk. That's some diamond underpants. Uh, I know, but Minnesota has just been – their secondary has been um, absolutely putrid. And then yep. if you're playing in super flex leagues, there's a couple quarterbacks you you want to not forget to pick up. Um, that would be Colt McCoy is a must pick up now that he becomes the starter rest of the season. He plays Denver. No, no, no. I'm just I'm, – I'm not saying as a streamer this week. I'm saying just, just in up. super flex, these guys are going to be picked up uh, because they're starters now. Colt McCoy – Baker Mayfield, if he was dropped, two starters. I don't know how much money it would take me to play Matt Ryan in my fantasy playoffs. <laughs> it's it's uh, <laughs> you you. I like, would probably just dip out of the playoffs. It's a spicy. I'd probably just lay down my burrito. You saying you didn't feel like you you could put Brock Purdy in there? That's where I was looking at with Matt Ryan. I'm like, oh man, against Minnesota, it should be good. Whenever you whenever you need a midweek announcement to let you know. That Matt Ryan's the starter still. <laughs> That's about as scary as it could get. But um, I do like Mac Jones against the Raiders. Yeah, it's, I think it's I think fair. this offense has uh, been willing to throw the ball. Like he wants to throw it down the field, and if the running game isn't as good, maybe he gets that chance. Raiders can put up some points. I don't know. It's going to be a very interesting week. I hope that you already have one that you're really comfortable with. Yeah, but you might not. You might have had Kyler. You might have had Lamar. Might have had golf, and you're nervous about the Jets. I mean, yep. Jason laid it out there. There's not a compelling case as to Goff's success against the Jets because the only player that's done remotely well against him in the last 10 games is, is Josh Allen twice. Because he ran. ran. And I was going to say, because other, otherwise it's just it's a bloodbath. I mean, it's not been um, doable. But, I, dude, th these Lions – you know who these I, lines have good weapons, dude. Their they offense do. is tough to stop. I mean, when you've got two good running backs, three great wide receivers, 
uh, good offensive line. That, that's what I'm saying. This game is going to be exciting. But I, I think I'm going to pivot my my stream to Justin Herbert. So that's going to be who I'm going to roll with in the playoffs. Is is uh, really? Yeah, Herbert against Tennessee. Okay, He's got all his weapons. Because I was just... thinking about going Mahomes. Oh, that's a good one too. Mike, can I interest you in Jalen Hurts? Wait, can I yeah, pick him? Th yeah, those are our three streamers. He's, all, he's only 99.99% rostered. <laughs> right. So if you check your leagues. You're going to need to drop him first, and <laughs> then he'll be there. Oh, on yeah. Waivers if you drop up. and pick up, that is a waiver pickup. Yep. So I streamed him. I st <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> just mental warfare on your opponent. I'm streaming a quarterback against you this yeah. week. If, if you have the most fab. <laughs> Just uh, don't do this. Oh, if you have the most fab <laughs> and you spend all the fab, you dump your fab to get your guy back. As oh, so that's stupid. the move. Yeah, just a, it's a real. It, it is a power move yeah. until you didn't save your until bid you, properly you and forgot. Then, oh no, there's no takesy backsies on that one. <laughs> Risk reward situation, not good. But yeah, definitely do it. All right, that is going to do it for today's episode of the show. We'll be back tomorrow. <sighs> Brooks, you got the bye week. By about five points. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See you tomorrow, everybody. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.